hello guys welcome back to another android tutorial today we are going to learn about broadcast and broadcast receivers so before going to create an android application based on broadcast receivers you must have some theoretical concepts about broadcast and broadcast receivers so here i create a simple presentation that will give you the basic concepts of broadcast and broadcast receivers An Android app can receive broadcast messages from other app and from the Android system itself. A broadcast is sent when a particular event of interest is occurs. For, for example, Android system can send broadcast when various system events occurs such as the system complete the boot, there is low battery level and the user switch on or switch off airplane mode etc. So in all these situations the Android system will send a broadcast and if your app subscribe to that broadcast your app receive that broadcast. There are plenty of system broadcasters are available. You can check the official Google Docs for the system broadcast list. Also each app can send their own broadcast when some events occurs. For example after the successful download of a file in the background, your application can send a broadcast for update the UI to inform the user the file successfully download. Or we can say that broadcast can be used as a messaging system across the apps and outside of the normal user flow. That means we can say that the broadcast and broadcast receivers act as a messenger between all the android apps installed on a device and at the same time it act as a messenger between android app and the android operating system itself suppose your application doing the installation of a critical update and at the same time the battery is critically low so in such a situation the android system send a broadcast about the low battery level and if your app subscribe to that particular broadcast your app know about the critical low battery level so your application can abort the installation of that update to avoid malfunctioning of the app that is one of the most important use of broadcast okay now we can learn about how to implement broadcast and broadcast receivers an app can receive a broadcast in any of the two ways. First one, through manifest declared receivers. Second one, through context registered receivers. Okay, first we can learn about how to receive a broadcast through manifest declared receivers. So first you have to specify a receiver element in your manifest file. Here is the symbol example. So here uh, we define, we declare, we specify a receiver element inside the Android manifest.xml. So here the name indicate the receiver class. So here the name of the receiver class is my broadcast receiver. So here you have to specify the indent filter and here we specify two filter action first one is boot completed and input method change so this android app will receive a broadcast soon after the system complete the boot and if there is any change occur in the input method so here we specify a broadcast receiver that is capable of receiving two broadcasts So here the indent filter specify the broadcast action your receiver subscribes to. So after complete the manifest section, you have to create a class that extends broadcast receiver and in that class you must implement a method called on receive. And for that method you have to implement two parameters. 
First one is a context object and second one is an indent object. So here is an example of class that extends broadcast receivers. And here is the on receive method. So for receive the broadcast through manifest declared receivers, first thing you have to specify a receiver element in your Android manifest.xml and you have to specify the needed indent filters. Then you have to create a class that extends broadcast receiver. And in that class, you must implement a method called onReceive. And for that method, you must specify two parameters. First one is the context object and second one is an indent object. The system package manager registers the receiver when the app is installed. The receiver then becomes a separate entry point into your app, which means that the system can start the app and deliver the broadcast if the app is not currently running. That is another important thing. You can start the app through the broadcast receiver. That means you can send data between apps installed in an Android system. You can send data to an Android application even if the app not running. That is another important feature of broadcast receivers. The system creates a new broadcast receiver component object to handle each broadcast that, is received, that it receives. The object is valid only for the duration of the call to on receive method. Now we can learn about the second technique that means how to receive the broadcast through context registered receivers. First thing you have to create an instance of broadcast receiver. So here we create an instance of broadcast receiver class. Then you need to create an indent filter and register the receiver by calling register receiver method. For that method you have to pass two parameters. First one is the broadcast receiver object and second one is the indent filter object. Here is an example. So first here we create an indent filter object. Then we specify an action for the indent filter. Here the action is action airplane mode change. And finally we register the receiver by calling the method register receiver. And for that method first parameter is the broadcast receiver instance. And second parameter is the indent filter object. So this receiver is capable of receive the broadcast when user switch on or off the airplane mode. Context registered receivers receive a broadcast <coughs> as long as their registering context is valid. For example, if you register within an activity context, you can receive a broadcast as long as the activity is not destroyed. If you register within an application context, your app can receive a broadcast as long as the app is running. To stop receiving broadcast, all call unregister receiver method and for that method you have to pass the broadcast receiver object. Always unregister the receiver when you no longer need it or the context is no longer valid. If you register a receiver inside the onCreate method using the activity context, then you should unregister it in the onDestroy method. If you register a receiver within the onReceive method, you should unregister it in the onPost method. Okay, now we can learn about how to create your own broadcast or how to send a broadcast. To send a broadcast, first create an indent object with appropriate indent filter. Then you need to call a method called send a broadcast and pass that indent filter object. Here is an example. So first here we create an indent filter obje indent object, then specify an action for the indent object, and here we add some data to the indent object, and finally 
we send the broadcast by calling the method send broadcast and pass the intent object as parameter. So I hope you, you get a basic concepts about broadcast and broadcast receivers. Now we are going to create an Android application that contain all these concepts.